Maggot, the strangest X-Men with an ability to consume anything. All superheroes have their baggage and more often than not, they rise only after facing many difficulties due to their supernatural abilities. One such hero, Maggot, was an X-Men who struggled to grasp control over his strange powers. Created by Scott Lobdell and Joe, he first appeared in the Uncanny X-Men comics and possessed the ability to consume all forms of things. Over the course of years, Maggot mastered his powers and became a part of the core X-Men team. With some assistance from external creatures, he has grown into quite a powerful mutant. Let us dive into his origins and look at what sets him apart from other X-Men. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. The first comic book appearance explored. Maggot's character was first introduced in the Uncanny X-Men comics number 345. He appears only for a brief moment when he rescues a nun from an unknown supernatural entity. It so happens that a nun gets cornered by a monster who demands to know about a man named Joseph and even threatens her life for the information. The panicked woman ends up banging her car into a tree honking deliriously and hoping to get noticed by anyone around. Maggot picks up on her signals for help and sends the two slugs that reside in his body to go after the unknown monster. The slugs make their way through his armor and attack the monster's vitals and flesh. As the monster weakens and finally collapses, the nun looks around to find Maggot appearing at the scene while the slugs return to their host. As the nun exclaims that the events of the last few minutes were quite disgusting, Maggot assures her that it is definitely not as disgusting as what could have become of her if he wasn't around to save her. From a harsh childhood to discovering himself, Maggot's life was full of hardships ever since his birth. As he tried to make sense of his powers, a young Japheth who later evolved into the Maggot was born in a tiny village in South Africa where he lived with his parents and five siblings. From an infantile age, Japheth's physical growth was tainted by the slugs that lived in his guts, creating a lot of trouble for his parents. They struggled with the finances of his hospital visits as they tried to find a cure for the excruciating stomach pains that Japheth endured. Eventually, the doctors concluded that he must be suffering from cancer, and Japheth decided to leave his family. Just at the young age of 12, he left his village and almost committed suicide so that he didn't burden his family with his medical expenses. He made his way to the Kalahari Desert, where the powerful mutant Magneto prevented him from taking his life. Magneto recognized that the young boy had mutant abilities and even helped Japheth uncover the two slugs that lived in his intestines. Along with some help from Magneto, Japheth managed to rid his body of the slugs and they named them Eni and Mini. Magneto accompanied Japheth back to his village where they received the news that his father had been brutally murdered by a rebel group known as the Africaners. Magneto helped the village folks by getting rid of the Africaners while Japheth witnessed the fight go down. Magneto even made him an offer to join hands with him but the young boy vowed to never work with him or assist in such violence. Though Magneto is enraged to hear his refusal, he leaves Japheth alone, but not before declaring that he will one day change his mind. As the years progressed, Maggot struggled with his powers and was unable to control the slugs. The creatures slithered in and out of his stomach every time they needed food, and he had a hard time dealing with the pain. His attempts to subdue the slugs were futile, and they made their way in and out of his body every few hours. After some time, the pain got too excruciating to deal with, and Maggot finally gave up trying to get a hold of the slugs on his own. He decided to look for Magneto and ask the mutant for some help in dealing with the slugs. Maggot used his powers to trap Magneto down and ended up in New York. However, he does not find Magneto there and instead runs into other X-Men such as Psylocke and Archangel. Eventually, they all teleported to Antarctica, where they end up on the jury for an ongoing trial among the X-Men. Maggot locates Magneto, though this version of the mutant was a clone whose real identity was Joseph. Maggot believes him to be the real Magneto and expresses his thanks for looking out for him in his childhood. Once the trial ended, Maggot decided to accompany the other X-Men to the Xavier Mansion. As the group arrived, they discovered that Cyclops had been in a fight and had a bomb in his body. They extracted the bomb from his chest cavity and saved him, but the bomb continued ticking. While the X-Men looked for other ways to detonate it, Maggot's slugs acted fast and devoured the entire bomb. Though the bomb exploded in their body, it did not cause much harm to the slugs. Relieved that the crisis has been resolved, the X-Men express their gratitude to Maggot and officially ask him to become one of them. Even as a part of X-Men, Maggot kept to himself and did not share much about his past. He felt uncomfortable eating with others and was positive that they would be horrified by the real nature of the slugs that resided in him. 
However, things took a turn when the creatures similar to Eni and Meenie were attacking humans, resulting in a massacre at the Salem Center. Furthermore, these creatures also attacked the Wolverine and the X-Men uncovered that these attacks were caused by Rutai demons that worked for a bloodthirsty monster known as Pilgrim. Finally, Maggot opened up to Wolverine and talked about his childhood and the true nature of his slugs, and the two X-Men shared a close bond. Maggot worked alongside the X-Men for some time until the mutant beast returned to Xavier Mansion. Beast suggested that Maggot would have a better place at the Massachusetts Academy, which was a more suitable place for gifted mutants. Maggot agreed to migrate there, but he was soon cornered by a threat in the form of hunters who were looking for Eni and Meenie. He escaped with some help from Generation X, a group of mutant teens that trained with him at the academy. He decided to leave the place and look for the hunter on his own. Maggot then traveled by himself for many years and was not heard of until he returned to Xavier's academy to attend Joseph's funeral. Death and Revival When Maggot ventured out on his own, he got cornered by the secret organization called Weapon X. Weapon X was a U.S. government project that dealt with experiments with supernatural powers, and they decided to imprison him to study his powers. They kept him at Neverland, a concentration camp explicitly made for mutants and supernatural entities. However, they soon concluded that Maggot's superpowers were not any use to their project, and they only required the two slugs, Eni and Meenie. The organization allegedly killed Maggot and handed the slugs to young mutant children instead. One of these slugs later ended up in the hands of the mutant-obsessed scientist Mr. Sinister. Meanwhile, Maggot was brought back to life by using magic as well as an alien virus. He was revived with some help from Celine Gallio, a notorious supervillain who went against the X-Men on many occasions. Maggot was also exposed to the techno-organic virus that helps revive the dead. After having turned a new page, Maggot returned to the X-Men and was in attendance when Cyclops spoke about a peaceful mutant revolution in Washington, D.C. What makes him such a strange and powerful mutant? What sets Maggot apart from other mutants is his unique digestive system, which was composed of two slugs. These slugs were no regular creatures and were gigantic techno-organic beings that provided Maggot with energy and strength. Though his mutant self could not consume any food, the slugs devour almost anything and everything with utmost speed. They left his body to get their nourishment and even fed off other beings or Maggot's enemies before returning to their host. The slugs then shared the energy they had obtained with Maggot, thereby supplying him with the strength to keep going. This strength caused Maggot's body to turn blue and gave him an extraordinary amount of power and superhuman durability. These slugs also had their own minds and could communicate with Maggot through telepathy. They were pretty intelligent beings and even acted of their own accord at times. While Maggot is quite capable on his own, he is entirely dependent on the slugs to work as his digestive system. Though he can live apart from them for a short period of time, the slugs help him survive in the long term and total separation from them could result in his death. Besides this, Maggot also has the ability to psychometrically recall any event, meaning that he can access information about any incidents that happen in a particular area by just visiting the place. This power also helps him to track people down or even look into places they may have visited in the past. Admittingly, his powers are quite strange and different in comparison to the other X-Men, but that doesn't imply that he is any less mighty, and it is his strange powers that make him the powerful mutant that he is. Conclusion To conclude, Maggot is a powerful X-Men, and with added help from his slugs, he is quite undefeatable. After having been through difficulties all through his entire life, he has become a seasoned fighter. Though he is not a typical mutant, Maggot still possesses a great deal of powers and it is best to stay out of his path. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.